as of today, thanks to Jason Leopold and Anthony Cormier at BuzzFeed, we can see the criminal referral that went to the Justice Department about Trump's behavior. This criminal referral from the inspector general who was like, I've looked into this in a preliminary way. This looks serious to me. You need to evaluate whether this is, whether this is potential crimes. He put it in writing. We can see that document for the first time today. And we know how that story ends, right? That inspector general who made that criminal referral about Trump, Trump fired him <laughs> several months later. He fired him in April of 2020. But the guy who was given the criminal complaint to deal with, the one who buried it and tried to make it go away and said, there doesn't even need to be an investigation of this. That was Jeffrey Rosen. And Jeffrey Rosen just got named to be the new attorney general for the last month of Trump's time in office. We learned that William Barr was pushed out or resigned last night. And we learned that his hand-picked deputy, Jeffrey Rosen, will be taking Barr's place and running the Justice Department until Trump is no longer president. Jeffrey Rosen's key role in trying to cover up the scandal and the alleged criminal behavior by the president that led to Trump's impeachment, it's interesting to me, it hasn't had much scrutiny at all since the announcement that he's going to be the new attorney general. But if he's taking over the Justice Department for just the last month of the Trump administration, it's worth thinking about the kinds of things that Trump might want to do in that last month. It's worth remembering the role that Rosen had in trying to make that alleged criminal behavior by President Trump not only disappear, but disappear in a way that would submarine those allegations and prevent anybody else from looking at them. But it's, you know, but look at what else has happened over Jeffrey Rosen's tenure since he and William Barr have been in office. As reporter Charlie Savage puts it today at the New York Times, quote, Mr. Rosen has kept a low profile, but with Attorney General Barr's pending resignation, Rosen is set to become the nation's top law enforcement official for the delicate final month of Mr. Trump's presidency. It will be an extraordinary responsibility for a man who has no prosecutorial experience and who has participated in several decisions in which the department took steps that favored the president's friends or punished his perceived enemies. I would add to that steps that benefited the president directly against serious allegations of criminal behavior. But the litany of things that Rosen's been involved in is amazing. I mean, among other things, it was Jeffrey Rosen who tried to force an indictment of Andrew McCabe, who was the acting FBI director who took over the FBI after Trump fired Comey. McCabe had overseen the important parts of the Russia investigation. President Trump demanded that McCabe be prosecuted and locked up. It was Jeffrey Rosen who tried to insist that McCabe must be indicted, that he must be prosecuted against the views of career prosecutors. It was also Jeffrey Rosen who was put in charge of reviewing the work of career prosecutors who took on the case of Roger Stone. The result of Rosen's review was that DOJ came in and tried to overrule all those prosecutors to insist that Roger Stone get a much lighter sentence. The prosecutors on that case quit in protest after what Jeffrey Rosen did to their case against Stone. It was Jeffrey Rosen who, according to The New York Times, quarterbacked the Justice Department bringing a case against Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton when Bolton set out to write a book critical of President Trump. Trump reportedly demanded that the Justice Department go after Bolton for having the temerity to write a negative book about Trump. It was Jeffrey Rosen that actually led the Justice Department in that effort to, in fact, put the power of the U.S. Justice Department into an effort to go after Bolton. It was also Jeffrey Rosen who decided that Trump cabinet secretary Ryan Zinke shouldn't be prosecuted, even after Zinke was referred for criminal prosecution related to a number of scandals. And career prosecutors convened a grand jury in that case. It was Jeffrey Rosen who kiboshed that, and Zinke was never charged over the objections of career prosecutors. It was Jeffrey Rosen, as we heard on last night's show, who intervened with prison officials to make sure that Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort would not have to set a delicate foot inside the jail on Rikers Island, like any other prisoner would have had to do if that prisoner was in federal custody, but also facing criminal charges in New York state court. It was Jeffrey Rosen who intervened to make sure Manafort wouldn't have to go to Rikers. It was Jeffrey Rosen who wrote that letter to federal prosecutors just a few months ago, telling them that they, could, they should consider charging anti-racism protesters with sedition, sedition, the, the crime of trying to overthrow the U.S. government. That was Jeffrey Rosen who wrote to prosecutors to tell them that that's how they should treat anti-racism protesters, charge them with trying to overthrow the U.S. government and throw the book at them. That's Jeffrey Rosen's record under William Barr at the Justice Department. And now he is going to be taking over the Justice Department for the last month that Trump's in office, when I'm sure Trump won't insist on doing anything weird at all with the powers of the Justice Department. <clears throat> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs>